Bush Blast looks like a snow shovel. What's it going to look like after the 500? Hi, this is Brent McMillan. You're listening to the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. With me this week, Rob Albright from PRN. With so many faces in new places, and after Sunday's Bush crash and crash and crash, many seem to think the rest of the week is going to be quite tame and tepid. I'm not so sure about that. And Tom Jensen from the NASCAR Hall of Fame. For Eric Jones, the Bush Clash wasn't checkers or wreckers. It was checkers and wreckers. It's the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters on the Performance Racing Network. Presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Your professional parts people. Now, here's your host, Brett McMillan. Hey, welcome to the show. Glad to have Tom and Rob here. I'm going to try to keep Rob from blocking Tom during the course of the show because it might take out the rest of us during the course of the event. No doubt. (laughs) Hey, Tom. Did you not get the dress code? I didn't. I missed the memo. Yeah, there was a memo. Should have been. Brett's wearing a tie. Want to take my tie off? Will that make you feel better? I would feel, yes, less stressed. I'm liable to use your rear bumper, though. Okay, well, okay. I took the tie off. All right, there. You feel better now? I do. Okay. Thank you. All right. Hey, uh, I tell you, we talked about the Bush, as you refer to it, the Bush crash, Rob. It it, It was the strangest event. But the thing is, we, you know, we've talked about the blocking, and blocking has been the topic of conversation across the NASCAR world. But when you really get right down to it, one wreck was because of blocking. Another one was because guys spun spinning their tires. Another one was because a tire went down. So really, was blocking that big an issue? I think it was, and I think it was for another reason, and that's the 150 horsepower extra that they have this year over what they had last year. About 400 last year, 550 this year. Almost an identical aero package, and the closing rates are so phenomenally quick. That relates not only to tracking down a group of cars 10 seconds ahead of you, that comes into play when you're only a few inches or a few feet in front of the, behind the car in front of you. So there is going to be an adjustment period, I do believe, for these drivers, and they are going to have to allow maybe just a fraction of a second. Because unlike you and me, when we make a move on the interstate, kind of hold our breath when we squeeze in in front of somebody, they're way closer to the guys around them at 100 miles an hour faster than we are. I don't hold my breath. I just move over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. that guy. I'm that guy. <laughs> You're that guy. <laughs> Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> well, it, it was amazing to see. And, and you know, there there's subplots with all of this. You know, Keselowski got out of his car and was very mad at his teammate. And, you know, racers tend to be very binary. They go from week to week and they scream at their crew chiefs and they scream at their owners on the radios and then they forget about it. But you wonder if there's going to be an undercurrent with teammates about this issue and and about the blocking, especially if someone gets taken out. The other thing to think about, and this is going to affect the entire schedule, these cars are now officially disposable because they're not going to race in 2021. So you don't have to save your Talladega car or your Daytona car for the next plate race or or next season. You know, you wreck them, so what? 
you're going to have new cars next year anyway. So I wonder how that's going to change the dynamic as we go forward. Well, I figure both Joey and Brad were going to the happiest place on earth, Disney World. So, you know, everything will be fine after that. You know, they'll, they'll both come back joyous and happy with mouse ears. Till they get back in the car. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, you know, the thing is, that's what we've come to expect at Daytona and Talladega. And, you know, Tony Stewart used to get on his high horse and talk about, I'm sick and tired of blocking. No blocking. But when Tony Stewart got out in front, what would Tony Stewart do? And if Brad Keselowski's out in front on Sunday, Brad Keselowski is a master at it. Oh, yeah. No question. What will that. he be doing? He'll be blocking. Of course, he'll be blocking. I, I think there's there's another piece to this dynamic, and it is what has happened in the offseason. And I, I just want to go on the record as saying there was not a crew chief swap. Really, there was a driver swap because the crew chief and the entire crew that he was over stay together. Technically, yeah, the car numbers change. The look of the cars are what the drivers have always had, but the driver gets everybody all new. And I think that's had Brad a little bit on edge. My guess is, and I don't know this for a fact, but my guess is he probably was not consulted. And I think I think he and Paul Wolf, they just had a, a special, let's just call it a special relationship of mutual trust. And I think I think Brad's going to be a little bit on edge for a while about all this. Well, pout, hitting, maybe hitting, a little bit of a pout. Hitting there. the fence on the way out to practice yeah, will do that well, too. Mm. And, and let's not forget, this is a contract year for for Brad and yep. for a lot of people. There's a lot of free agents, you know, who are going to be up for new deals for 2021 and beyond. And you know that affects how you think too. Absolutely. You, you know, talking about that. Who would think that Brad Keselowski, having found a home at Penske, would ever consider leaving? But with his contract up at the end of the year, a guy named Johnson is going away at the end of the year. If you were Rick Hendrick, would you not be on Brad Keselowski's speed dial? Because they're going to need a veteran driver to step in. I don't know that Chase Elliott is going to be the veteran that they're looking for in that team yet. Bowman certainly is not there yet. He's still in his – he's – in his contract year as well. And then uh, with Byron, you know, he's the, he's the sponge. He's the learner right now. So they're going to need somebody to fill that seat that can step in and lead that team. Well, and Tom, I mean, Rick Hendrick before has said that he never wanted Kislowski to get away, but he just didn't have a seat for him when he was driving, you know, for junior motorsports. Well, here's what's interesting. What we've seen in the last three or four years is driver salaries cut. Mm -hmm. Is old guys, older guys like mm -hmm. Ken Sith, you know, sort of pricing themselves out of the market or being priced out of the market so they can bring in these young guys and save a few million dollars a year. Are we going to have a bidding war this year? Is there going to be a bidding war for Keselowski, for Kyle Larson, for some of the other people? That's going to be one of the fascinating storylines to keep an eye on this year. And, well, how, what, and how many more letters written in cursive will Rick Hendrick get? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, right? we'll, we'll talk about that later on. <laughs> We're going to talk about that later on. Yeah. But let's get back to the clash. And a guy who, you know, has signed finally his extension, it took a long time to get to that point, was Eric Jones gets the win. And it's so funny. I mean, Eric Jones, it seems like every time, he, you know, the times he's won, it has taken such an effort to get there. You know, the, the first win at Daytona, and it's just a wild win. And it, you know, the Southern 500, it happened. But he take the checkered flag at like 4 o'clock in the morning. I mean, it was it, it's such an effort. And then to have a car, Tom, that looked like a, a, a plow at the finish line, I mean, it was amazing. Well, and the car behind him looked like a plow, too. And that, that front end matched up. And they were much faster together, which is... I mean, it's just so weird. Who could have predicted mm -hmm. an outcome like that? Now, I don't expect we'll see that in the 500, but who knows? Mm -hmm. It's 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 going to be a wild finish to the week, and I'm very excited about the possibilities for this 500. Rob? I, I wouldn't disagree with that at all. I, I think, and, and maybe you were going to talk about this a little bit later, but what I was amazed at, guys, was was the disparity in qualifying times. And I know that some crew chiefs, and why would Brian Patty not uh, be very aggressive with a trimmed-out race car for Ricky Stenhouse Jr.? But even so, 
Hendrick has done that the last several years to get the top three or four qualifying positions. So to see that JTD Doherty car get the pole was pretty impressive. But I was noticing, I don't know if you guys noticed this, 46.2 seconds for Stenhouse. Seventh fastest was Eric Almirola at 46.73. Half a second difference between first and seventh. So will that impact uh, the twin 150s? I think it absolutely will because those cars are in impound. Am I right? There's a very limited amount of work that they can do between now and then. So are we going to see Stenhouse go straight to the back? Possibly. Or he may see how good the car works like that. But if you look down through the field, there's huge disparities all the way through the field in qualifying times. With the fact that they've got that additional 150 horsepower, I think it's going to be... I would not be surprised to see a rerun of the Bush Clash on Sunday. Well, and I want to talk about that and talk about the qualifying because the Toyotas basically said, we're not going to win the poll and we don't let that bother us at all. We're going to talk about that in a minute. In the meantime, every week, you know, we do have a poll at uh, goprn.com. And this week's poll question is, what will the Daytona 500 winning car look like considering last week's car looked like a snowplow? Will it look like a snowplow? Will it be unscathed? Will it look like a lake model car or a partially transformed transformer? <laughs> Last week, we asked you, should the season start with the Bush Clash or the Daytona 500? And two-thirds of you said you liked the Clash. 67% and 33% said you wouldn't mind seeing the season just go straight to the Daytona 500. All right, when we come back, we'll talk about qualifying and what it means and what should we should we expect from the 500. Stay with us. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. This is Sarah's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. Driving cross country with two young children is ambitious, to say the least. Then our check engine light came on. We pulled into O'Reilly Auto Parts and they tested it. Turned out it was a faulty sensor. They referred us to a great mechanic just down the street and we were back on the road in no time. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. We want to help extend the life of your vehicle. Add ZMAX Micro Lubricant to the fuel and oil where it uses the fluids to reach internal parts. As it soaks into metal, ZMAX disperses harmful carbon buildup to help improve performance, reduce emissions, extend engine life, and increase fuel mileage. Buy ZMAX today at ZMAX.com or your local auto parts store. Help your vehicle run better with ZMAX Micro Lubricant. We've got more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters in a moment. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Hey, it's Kathy Martindale and Paul Shad on ZMAX Racing Country. We're so proud of bringing you the best singers in country music and the biggest stars in NASCAR. It's Kathy and Brothers Osborne. What would she tell me about you guys? She would probably tell you that I played a munchkin in The Wizard of Oz. She just thinks it's funny because I'm tall, and I'm glad I played the munchkin. (laughs) Z-Max Raising Country. Music from the fast lane. Hi, this is Major General Chuck Swanick. Each year, Speedway Children's Charities partners with hundreds of programs nationwide that help children from combating pediatric cancer to providing a healthy meal. We help kids wherever and whenever they need us. Through the support of our longtime partners and awesome fans, we have granted more than $55 million helping more than 13 million children in your surrounding communities. Learn more about how you can help a child by visiting us at speedwaycharities.org. Get your straight line racing news with PRN's Nitro Notes, presented by Wix Filters. Visit goprn.com. Now, more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. Hey, welcome back, along with Tom Jensen from the NASCAR Hall of Fame, Rob Albright from PRN, Brett McMillan. Glad to have you with us. And we talked a little bit about qualifying. And it's interesting, Tom, when you when you look at recent years, I mean, Hendrick Motorsports has been really fast at Daytona and qualifying, so it shouldn't be surprised that they were fast again. I think the surprise is it wasn't Hendrick on the pole, but JTG Doherty was on the pole with Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who has been fast at Daytona in the past. And who had a Hendrick engine. And who had a Hendrick engine this time. I mean, which is a great story for the team. I mean, this is this is a team, it's, you know, 
you know, back when Marcus Ambrose was running for this team, and then when, you know, you had, they've been a team you looked at on the road courses and, and felt like, okay, that's when they really got a chance to do something. You know, maybe they got a chance to make some noise this week, but it's going to be interesting to see if he can stay up front or get through the first couple of turns without wrecking the entire field. <laughs> well, Stenhouse has won two restrictor plate races, so that that augurs well in his, his favor. But this race is so hard to predict. You, you look, there's only seven guys in a field of 40 cars who've won this race before. So it, it's very difficult. You look at some of the people who haven't won this race, Kyle Busch, arguably with Jimmy Johnson, arguably the best driver of this generation, Brad Keselowski, Martin Truex Jr., uh, three of the four Hendrick drivers, three of the four Stuart Haas drivers, uh, the other three JGR drivers. None of them have won the Daytona 500. So it's a, and Stenhouse hasn't either. It's a tough race to win. I'm not sure why. There's a lot of theories, but it, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. Heard a little interesting bit of trivia today. And uh, this might be easy the way you've teed this up, but what active driver has the best average finish at Daytona? In the 500 or just at the In the 500. In the 500. Oh. Uh, I'll just Austin Dillon? Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Really? Yes, sir. <laughs> Who would have thought that? I, it wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought so. No. I mean, that's interesting. But, but the thing is, he, he also gets highly criticized for being overly aggressive. But we may see, and I've had a chance to talk to Brad Doherty some about this, and I think they feel like that he's, he's going to be in a less – pressure-packed situation having to prove himself now. I mean, if, I think he felt like he was, you know, he was on the hot seat at, at Roush. He wasn't performing up to, up to expectations. He was trying to make the car do something it couldn't do and that he may be not so over the edge now. I, I think that's true. I, I think the expectations will be high. Uh, I thought what Brian Patty said after, uh, after qualifying was very telling very calmly, not boastfully or arrogantly at all, said this team is capable of winning races and we're going to win races. And he did not say that because he had to say that to keep Kroger happy or to make Tad happy and Jody happy and Brad happy. He said that because he's already got that sense. And I, I think, and, and I want to be careful how I say this, there's a different uh, philosophy top-down philosophy at JTG Doherty than there is at RFR. And I think expectations are one thing, uh, but the, the comfort level that you have within the organization and, and the uh, comfort that you get from leadership is better at JTG Doherty. Tom? Well, I think he's going to have a tough challenge winning this race. All the drivers will. The question is, do the Hendrick guys work with him because he has a Hendrick engine? He only has one teammate. It, it's it's going to be a challenge for him. He has a fast car. He has a rocket ship. There's no question. But he's got to be able to keep it together for 500 miles. And we know this race is won by the guy who is in the right place at the right time with the right person or people behind him. Um, you, you just don't luck into this race. It's, it's a very, very, very difficult race to win. There's a reason, Brett, why the, uh, uh, JGR cars don't contend for the pole position. And it is because they are set up in the shop when they unload to be good handling race cars over long green flag runs when the tires start to wear and when things get dicey in the aerodynamic conditions. They're not set up to be blazing fast by themselves for one lap. The 47 car was set up to be that. So not to take a thing away from the accomplishment, but I would say on that basis alone, Tom, I would be quite surprised if they are able to make the adjustments necessary to have a car for 500 miles that can maintain a position out front. And the Toyotas have already proven they can work together. They did it in 2016. They won, Denny won last year. They know how to run this race strategically. They know how to do it. They know how to get to the front and, and stay on the front. Remember in 2016, they, there were four or five Toyotas in lockstep on the bottom of the track for what, what seemed like three quarters of the race, and they, they never moved off there. They know how to do this, and it's different when you're coming into a new team and you're getting used to a new teammate 
and and there's a lot of new things in your situation. So I, I think I still like the JGR cars. They still have, I think, the combination to win. And and let's face it, it does not matter where you qualify in this race. Doesn't matter if you qualify first or fortieth, because you're going to move through the field up and back you know, half a dozen times during the race. So they don't have to sweat where they start. All they want to do is, is make sure they have the best car possible ready to race on Sunday. When the Chevys decided they were going to turn the Bush clash into a fuel mileage race and it backfired almost embarrassingly. So I thought the way the rest of them were able to run those guys down. Do you think they really expected that to work or was that just, Hey, let's try this here. And if it works here, then maybe it's something we could replicate in the 500. I, I don't know. I I have not heard a lot of discussion about that decision to do that and whether what was the reasoning behind that, and should we expect to see that again on Sunday? I, I, I really doubt it. Well, I, I ask you guys, I mean, we've seen this happen, obviously, with Talladega and in the summer Daytona race. Or it has become, and it, you know, and Jim Campbell made no, no secret last year where he sat down the Chevy drivers and said, you will work together. Mm-hmm. Bottom line, period. End of statement. Mm-hmm. And you know, you guys talked about the you know the Toyota drivers, and the Toyota drivers are basically Gibbs plus the ninety five car. I mean, it's 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 easy to sit there and, and get these guys together and say work together. The four drivers drivers work together. Uh, I mean, I hear a lot of the fans say that's not what I want to see from racing. I want to see guys, you know. But we saw from Denny Hamlin and and Eric Jones at the end of, of the Bush Clash. When everybody else spread out and tried to, it was every man for himself. When those guys hooked up, they were what four and a half miles an hour faster than everybody else. While these guys were spread out, just trying to get a win, and look what it paid off. So, I mean, do you like these manufacturers going ahead and telling everybody stick together? Well, I think it's what they have to do to win. I mean, you got to survive five hundred miles. First of all, that's the main thing: survive five hundred miles. And as we have learned in the past few years, it used to be, you know, you could charge, you could be Dale Earnhardt and be 18th with four laps to go and win at a plate race. You can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So you got to be in a position to win in the last 10 laps. What's the best position to be in? Have three or four of your buddies lined up nose to tail with you. So I don't know that that I place a value judgment on it, good, bad, or indifferent. It's smart racing for them. And did you happen to notice the incident that everybody wants to point to as the turning point when Joey Logano did his put a, through his block on Kyle Busch? Denny Hamlin did not follow his teammate up the banking behind Joey Logano. He stayed down below him, and in fact, he was to the left or quarter panel of Bush, which is why Bush got into Logano. So that just confirms what you said, Tom. I mean, when you get close to the end of one of these races. Yeah, if you can help a teammate, you will. But when it gets to the the final analysis, it's every man for himself. Well, and if Denny Hamlin hadn't been a lap down, would he have stayed behind Eric Jones coming off a four, or would he have, you know, made a move himself to get to try to get the win? Well, I mean, in twenty sixteen, the the um, uh, Hamlin had his guys behind him. Last year, they finished one, two, three. So my guess would be he probably would have. He probably would have looked at it and said, okay, it's somebody else's turn on the team to win now. I don't like it, but that's the deal. I'm not sure about that because at the very end, you saw him pull out and pull up alongside. Now, whether that was a symbol of solidarity so that he could congratulate his teammate or whether he was just making a statement, yes, I'm a lap down, but if I wasn't, I'd be winning this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? But kudos to Denny Hamlin yeah. for getting behind his teammate. And I mean, hey, yeah. without Denny Hamlin's push, it that car, there's no way that car wins the race. <laughs> not not looking like it did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. When we come back to the Riley Auto Parts pit reporters, we didn't plan to have Tom here this week because of this. We had Tom here anyway because we like Tom. But it worked yeah. out that the Hall of Fame has announced a new way that they're going to be inducting members. And we're going to talk to Tom about that. And Rob's going to chime in on that as well when we come back. 
Medicare rules are confusing. They should be. There are over 130,000 pages of regulations. There's Part A through D, Medicare Advantage, and Medigap. According to the CMS, there are government programs available that can help you pay for your medical expenses. Choosing the right Medicare plan is a really big deal. The wrong choice can cost you a lot of money, and the right choice can put more money in your pocket. Call one of our licensed representatives today. At 65 Plus Medicare, our free service can show you a plan that will maximize your Medicare benefits, ensure you are taking advantage of all available government assistance programs, and save you money. Call now. 800-763-4829. 800-763-4829. 800-763-4829. That's 800-763-4829. Not all benefits listed may be available on all plans or in a single benefit package. Enrollment in the described plan type may be limited to certain times of the year unless you qualify for a special enrollment period. No obligation to enroll. More of the O'Reilly Auto Parts pit reporters in a moment. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Get your NASCAR fix with PRN's Garage Pass. Now more than ever, the teamwork aspect has is, is really come into play. Like everyone seems to really be committed to each other. That's really changed the game a lot. You get guys that try to go run around in the back and then they get taken out before the end anyway. So um, there's there's definitely nowhere to hide. For us as a race team, I'm not good at right around the back. It's not me, I can't do it. Hi, I'm Mark Garrow, tracking the latest racing news every weekday. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge to treat everyone with respect. Respect and dignity. I will not tolerate discrimination or harassment of any kind. I will speak up. Speak up. Whenever I know discrimination is happening. And I will stand up. Get up. Rise up. For victims. Take the pledge at risetowin.org. Download our free mobile app to listen to the show and more great PRN content on the go. Now back to the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. If you need to make an auto repair, go to O'Reilly Auto Parts. Their maintenance and restoration projects, they'll make them so much easier. When your car isn't stopping like it used to, professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts will help you find the brake parts and supplies you need to do the job right the first time. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day we appreciate their support of the o'reilly auto parts pit reporters along with tom jensen from the nascar hall of fame rob albright from prn brett mcmillan glad to have you with us and uh, since we've got tom here and the hall of fame announced a new way they're going to be doing inducting members tom why don't you run down the new rules okay in the friday before the daytona 500 the nominating committee meets and they will put together a list of 10 nominees for drivers whose careers have begun in 1961 or sooner. Uh, Later, there will be a group that will um, select 10 nominees whose careers began before 1961. Actually, it's 60 years. The class of 2021 will will be the next one. And then in May, when we go to vote, two of the people from the modern era will be selected off the 10 nominees. And in the pioneer ballot, We will have five nominees and one person will be chosen. So instead of five people going in, we'll have three going in. What kind of feedback have you guys gotten on that? Uh, Almost universally positive. I haven't seen anybody object to it. Well, I have been banging the drum for years to have a legends committee put together because, you know, we're, we're losing a lot of the people that saw these guys run in the early days of the sport. And I've, I, I, I applaud the hall of fame for finally putting something like this together where you can look at these guys where we, we still have the guys who saw these people run, who know who deserves to be in from that era, from the early, early days of the sport. And I, th- I, I think that's a great move, Rob. Yeah, I, I think so too. And I think uh, the fact that NASCAR really began to grow in the seventies and eighties, and that's when a lot of the fans came on board. So you don't have a lot of us, a lot of us old guys that are still around to know what went on in the 50s and the 60s and have that kind of appreciation for them. Because it was considered to be a regional sport until 
far more recently than in any other professional sport. I think it, it does deserve that special kind of treatment. And I think the fact that we're going to reduce the number of folks that get inducted into the Hall of Fame each year going forward uh, will keep it what it truly is, and that's a, a Hall of Fame. And and only true excellence will be recognized and that rewarded with membership in the Hall of Fame. Now, you talked about the nominating committee, Tom. Will when they vote, when people vote in May, will it still be the same group of people that have been voting? It, it will be a slightly larger group but it will be the same format in that the announcement will be made the same day. Fans can come down to the NASCAR Hall of Fame and watch the people, the three inductees, get announced. So it's, you know, the numbers might change a little bit, but it's basically the same process and most of the same people. It's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. And I think, you know, you start looking at this, and to your point, Rob, it, it turns it from a hall. Of, it's not a hall of very good now. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, all of a sudden you look at, you know, we had the debate when Carl Edwards walked away, you know, as Carl Edwards had a hall of fame career. And all of a sudden you start going, well, if you're only inducting two people a year and this covers anybody whose career has been in the last 60 years, you know, crew chiefs, engine builders, owners. I mean, now all of a sudden, you know, has Carl Edwards had, a, and I'm, I'm not picking on Carl Edwards per se, but I'm just, I'm pulling the name out, you know, has now Carl Edwards still had at this point in time, a hall worthy career. Whereas if you're still inducting five people a year, then maybe you might say in the next two to three years, yes, but now that, that date may have been pushed way out. Mm-hmm. Um, I think too, it, 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 brings about a scenario where those who are vote voting are going to give much greater thought to those that they choose maybe do significantly more research um knowing what impact some of these folks who, who who they may not have actually seen race or may not have seen their impact on the sport because it was in the 50s or it was in the 60s it was in the 70s uh, i i think it's going to make the selection process maybe even more meaningful and solemn than it has been. It's been, it was pretty easy to pick Dale Earnhardt for the hall of fame and Tony Stewart for the hall of fame, and Jeff Gordon for the hall of fame. And, um, but some of the other folks that have had a phenomenal impact and weighing that contribution piece, as well as on track performance, you know, all the things that, that go into what truly makes somebody, um, somebody that had a dramatic and significant impact on our sport. Is Dale Earnhardt Jr. eligible this year? Yes. Well, that takes care of one spot. (laughs) You know, I I, got to tell you that one one of the coolest parts of this job is the stories you hear from some of the old timers. One of the cars we have in the Hall of Honor now, the late Buddy Baker is the Grey Ghost. 40 years ago, set the fastest Daytona 500 ever run. 177.602 177.602 miles an hour, and it's the fastest Daytona 500 that will ever be run as long as they have stage racing. And I talked to Waddell Wilson, who went in this class with Buddy and built the car and built the engine in it. And if you look at the car, the tops of the doors are different widths. Hmm. If you look down this profile, the sides of the cars, they're different on either side, which was totally 100% legal. There's, there's nothing illegal about it. But, you know, Waddell walked me around the car and, and you can see the craftsmanship that went in it and some of the things. And, and he said that everybody was tilting the nose down, but he found out that if you kept the car level, the angle that the air hit the windshield fed air into the air cleaner mm. at the base of the hood better. And he picked up 60 horsepower doing that. And my favorite story is when he worked for the Wood Brothers, he said Pearson, David Pearson used to get a cup of Gatorade every time he have a pit stop and he'd drink about half of it and throw half of it out on the back stretch. And after the race, Waddell would study the pattern the Gatorade made on the side of the car. So he knew where the high pressure zones and the low pressure (laughs) zones were. And you think about all the stuff these guys did before there were computers and, and, Mm -hmm. and, and all that. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about these pioneers getting in because we're going to have a lot more of those stories and, and, 
that's that's going to be very cool for people who are going to be in the Charlotte area or coming in, you know, for the All Star race, the six hundred in May. Uh, what kind of stuff have you guys got, have coming up? I know you've had. Dale Earnhardt Jr. actually has put together a lot of the display you have right now on a Glory Road, right? Our Glory Road is called Dale Jr. Glory Road Champions. We have 18 cars from 15 different drivers, all past cup champions, all hand-selected by Dale Earnhardt Jr. There are 71, there have been 71 seasons in the cup season heading into the Daytona 500. We have drivers who won 46 of those 71 championships 1,076 races and 770 poles all on Glory Road. Yeah. It's a pretty phenomenal collection of cars. Anything else you have, guys, have any other special events you have coming up? We are just opened this week a new exhibit on 25 years of the NASCAR Truck Series. So we're pretty excited about that, and that'll be there through through uh, July, and then we'll we'll have some surprise stuff coming up after that. Ron Horner, did they donate any of his uh, hyped-up golf carts? Uh, we have a, a truck. Let, let me tell you, <laughs> if you, this is kind of a funny story. Okay. We got the first winning truck from 1994 before there was a truck series. NASCAR put on an exhibition race at Mesa Marin, won by, um, uh, PJ Jones, Parnelli's son. I looked it up. The race was 20 laps. It lasted seven minutes, but we've got that truck wow. and we've got the last <laughs> championship truck for Matt Crafton in 2019 and six other trucks in between. It's, it's going to be a fun exhibit. All right. Look forward to it. All right. Sounds cool. And we'll look forward to seeing who joins Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the class of 2021 or is it 2020? It'd be 2021. 2021. Yeah. I think it confuses me all the time. And you like, did the chief, stop just did the Chiefs just win the 2020, 19, yes, 2019 yes, season yes. or the 2020 season? 2020 Super Bowl 2019 <laughs> season. See? All right, when we come Too back, confusing. time for our guests to go. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. This is Jesse's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. As a nurse, not making it to work was not an option. But driving through the snow with my wiper blades struggling, I just didn't feel safe. So I pulled into O'Reilly Auto Parts, and before I knew it, an employee was offering to install the wiper blades on my car. I got to stay out of the snow for a moment, and I still made it to work on time. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. You ask, we listen. Atlanta Motor Speedway celebrates its 60th anniversary in 2020 with a new spring race date, March 13th through the 15th, with new and enhanced camping and fan amenities, all backed by the perfect weather guarantee. Get two races for the price of one with the Xfinity Series and Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series doubleheader on Saturday. Tickets for Sunday's Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 start at just $49, and kids are only $10. Online at AtlantaMotorSpeedway.com. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Blue Emu. No chill, no burn, no odor. Blue Emu works fast and you won't stink. There's more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters still to come. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Hear from the drivers and personalities of grassroots racing each week on PRN's At The Track. We cover the short tracks, dirt tracks, legends, and kart racing from the World of Outlaws, Lucas Oil Series, All-Star Circuit of Champions, USAC, Car Store, Pass, Ultimate Super Late Model Series, Fast Track, Neesmith, Power Eye, and more. That's PRN's At The Track every week on broadcast radio, the free PRN app, and iTunes. Kathy Martindale and Paul Shad on Z-Max Racing Country Classics. I go back a long time listening to Charlie Pride. I grew up in Sledge, Mississippi, right below Memphis. I started singing in clubs, and Red Savine and Red Foley came there for a show, and when she liked to do some songs on the show, I said, yeah, so I did. Tons of country music this weekend on Racing Country Classics. Z-Max Racing Country Classics. Get your short track racing fix with PRNs at the track. Visit GoPRN.com. Now, more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. It's O'Rewards Bonus Month. It's O'Rewards Bonus Points Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. 
Yes, I speak for a living. Uh, <laughs> stop in today for store-wide savings, plus earn double points on all sale items. Sign up today online or in-store and take advantage of bonus points month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. Rob Albright's here. Tom Jensen's here. Time for our gas and go. All right, Rob, a Motor Trend Group, a discovery company, and NASCAR have announced a new partnership to create NASCAR All-In, a battle for Daytona, which will a, a documentary series, which is going to feature guys getting ready for the Daytona 500. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that will be exciting, it, as long as it stays real and isn't contrived. Tom? I can't wait. All right, Front Row Motorsports, Tom, has announced their We Care marketing program that's going to cover the entire year, and they're going to start off promoting safe driving. I think that's a wonderful thing to promote. You know, we most of us have got kids and went through the driver's head thing with them, and you can never be too safe. If they get a handful of texters off the road, I'll be happy. All right, Ryan Truex has announced that he's going to compete in a partial schedule in the NASCAR Gander RV and Outdoor Truck Series this year for Nice Motorsports. I'd like to see him get more opportunities. He's a, he's a talent. Yeah, he's he's a good young driver. It, it's tough getting good rides these days. All right, if you want to play as if you are Tony Stewart, you don't play golf, you get the Tony Stewart Sprint Car Racing game, which is available for Xbox One and PlayStation 4. You want to be Tony Stewart? Tom? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be great fun. They'll sell a ton of them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Exalta has extended their relationship with Hendrick Motorsports until 2027, Rob. Yeah, I think that's great. There have been a lot of announcements lately. It's super to see more sponsors staying in. Tom? Yeah, they have a building on the Hendrick campus. They have a great big training center on the... Henry Campus, it's a true partnership. It's not a sponsorship. All right, Tom, according to the Sports Business Journal's Adam Stern, there is a lot of talk around NASCAR that they are seriously considering road or uh, actually street course racing around maybe like a Soldier Field in Chicago or a Los Angeles Coliseum. Are we buying it? I don't know if it happens or not, but I think it'd be cool to see. I'd like to see it in Seattle. Oh, around what stadium? Uh, wherever the Seahawks play. I don't know the name of it. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. CenturyLink Field, according to Harold okay, Hamrick, who's been to all the stadiums. <laughs> Thanks, Harold. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, which you talked about earlier, Rob, uh, Corey LaJoy presents Rick Hendrick with a handwritten note outlining why he should be in the 48 car next year. Well, I'm sure a bunch of others will write, but that kid does deserve a shot someplace in, in some place that can get him to the front. Tom? Hey, give him, give him credit for Moxie. You never know unless you ask. My mother would be proud of him. You know, she, my mother still thinks everybody should get handwritten thank you notes delivered. The question is, is his mother proud of him? Well, I'm sure she probably is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I know she is. My mother doesn't buy that you can send somebody a thank you email. <laughs> handwritten note, Mr. Hendrick, here you go. Uh, speaking of guys uh, who do have rides next year, uh, Kevin Harvick has confirmed that he has signed, Tom, a two-year contract extension with Stuart Haas Racing. So uh, any thoughts of Mr. Harvick moving up into the Fox booth or NBC booth uh, anytime soon? Uh, not happening. He's a tremendous talent. You know, he's a past champion. He's won the Daytona 500. He, he's won a lot of NASCAR's big races. He's one of our true elite stars in the field and good for him and good for Stuart Haas win-win for everybody I don't see Kevin hanging around beyond any time that he knows he can be competitive so you know what as long as he thinks he's and and proves it in the race car which he's certainly doing at this juncture he's still going to be sitting behind that wheel well you know the interesting thing is as part of this he is you know because he used to sit on some of the Xfinity races on Fox and said he's not going to do that this year he's given up his serious show because he wants to totally concentrated on driving and also family time as well. He said that was taking away too much time uh, from the family and from his driving focus. Got to get Keelan ready for his seat. <laughs> That's right. Well, we'll see what Delaney has to say about that. All right, when we come back, we've got a rookie class that has, I don't think we've seen one like this in a long time. So who's going to be the standout among those guys? Stay with us. It's happening to you every night. One snores. <clears throat> And the other can't sleep. It seems like there's no end to it. But now there's a quick and easy to use solution. A natural solution. Snore Stop. 
Try it risk-free today. Snore Stop was created and tested by a team of physicians and has been helping couples sleep for over 20 years. It is the number one selling anti-snoring medicine in the U.S. Snore Stop sprays or tablets are now available nationwide. All you have to do is call. It's time to try Snore Stop and make every night a better night for both of you. Don't wait. Try Snore Stop, the number one selling anti-snoring medicine in the U.S. Spray or tablets. Call right now for your risk-free trial offer. 800-984-0965. 800-984-0965. 800-984-0965. That's 800-984-0965. Want to hear one of our past shows? Visit GoPRN.com. This is PRN. The Performance Racing Network. History at the Magic Mile. Somebody's going to have to give here. They stay three wide. And here comes Harvick. He gets to the back. Purple Kyle Busch on turn two. Now they go side by side down the back stretch. Here comes Kevin Harvick. Come celebrate New Hampshire Motor Speedway's 30th anniversary. Tickets start at $35. Parking is free. New England's longest tailgate. Your only chance to see the NASCAR stars in your backyard. July 17th to the 19th. Wow. You ask, we listen. Atlanta Motor Speedway celebrates its 60th anniversary in 2020 with a new spring race date, March 13th through the 15th, with new and enhanced camping and fan amenities, all backed by the perfect weather guarantee. Get two races for the price of one with the Xfinity Series and Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series doubleheader on Saturday. Tickets for Sunday's Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 start at just $39. Plus, kids are only $10. Online at AtlantaMotorSpeedway.com. Get your straight line racing news with PRN's Nitro Notes, presented by Wix Filters. Visit GoPRN.com. Now, more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. Hey, welcome back. Along with Rob Albright from PRN, Tom Gentle from the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Brett McMillan, glad to have you with us. There's been a lot of talk about the big three moving up from the Xfinity Series. Rob, you got Christopher Bell, Tyler Reddick, Cole Custer. You know, and, and John Hunter Nemechek's kind of moving on up, too, and, and not getting a lot of attention as well. But when you look at this rookie class, I can't remember the last time we had a rookie class with this kind of gravitas, for lack of a better term. I mean, it, th- these guys are really impressive. And when you talk about, you know, Bell, Custer, and Reddick, they're all, I mean, Bell, you can kind of say, well, he's not really moving into a, a high-quality established team, but it all depends on how much support Gibbs is given to Levine family racing. And we're all assuming a lot, but I mean, they're all moving into top notch rides. Not only that, typically when a, a, a Xfinity driver moves up to the cup level, he takes whatever crew chief he's given by the team that he's going to be racing for. In this instance, all three of those guys get to take their crew chiefs with them. And I think that, I think that's really significant, and it makes it especially difficult to to say, I think this one is going to outperform the other two for that reason. Because I think the fact that they're all going together, you know, with their crew chiefs from the Xfinity Series, I think they're going to have the same kind of battle for that rookie of the year that they had in the championship last year. The other thing is what we've seen in recent years is guys who move up to cup hit a wall initially. You know, no matter how good they are, took Chase Elliott a while to win. It took, um, uh, you know, Daniel Suarez struggled and is now on his third cup team. We've had some other guys who've moved up and, and just haven't. You know, know, we're still waiting for William Byron to get his first win. Still waiting for William Byron to, to get his first win. So it's by no means a slam dunk that any of these four guys that we're talking about wins a race or has a breakout season. I think the measuring stick has to be how they do relative to each other, mm-hmm. not how they do relative to Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick and Truex and Johnson. Yeah. I don't think any of the three really have a, a scenario where they've got to prove themselves in one year. Uh, I think they're, they're all going to have an opportunity to have at least a couple of seasons because as Tom said, it does take a while to get acclimated to the level of competition um, in, in longer races and more demands on their time. And, and I think the, the discipline that they have to have 
is crucial. So I said, which one is going to have the greatest success? Probably the one that establishes the best self-disciplines. Well, and the interesting thing is, is you look at it, I mean, to your point, Tom, I mean, yeah, we haven't seen rookies come in and have great success in, in you know, just knock it out of the park. I mean, what is Tony Stewart was the last rookie to win a race. Is that, is that the right statistic? I'm trying to think, but you know, I don't, I don't think there's been one since well, then. Didn't, wasn't Joey's New Hampshire rain shortened win when he stayed out and won? When, wasn't that in his rookie season? Was that his rookie season? Yeah, I, th- uh, I think been, it was. Yeah, might have been. I think it was. It was. Yeah. But, but there haven't been a lot of them. Yeah, but that's the thing. And when you look at these guys, but they all came up, they all got so much attention last year, the mm-hmm. way they dominated the Xfinity Series. Oh, oh, Justin Haley won last year, right? No, oh, that's well, right. But he wasn't. It was another. But it was he technically? Well, was he technically a rookie? No. Yeah, that was his he, only his third start. Yeah, he wasn't a registered rookie. That's right. Well, yeah. did was Busher a rookie when he won the rain short race at Pocono? I guess technically, yeah, maybe. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Whatever. <laughs> they don't win. They don't win full length races there you very go. much. There you go. <laughs> And it gets hard that's right, because Justin that Haley didn't win a full run length race nope. either. Nope. Uh, so, but you look at these guys, and that's the one common theme you seem to hear with these guys is always it's, it's the length of the races. It's you know these guys drive hard every single lap, and I mean, and to me, that's I once I'll use an NFL comparison. I, I once somebody told me said, the difference between a good quarterback and a great quarterback is what happens once they get inside the red zone. Because things happen faster, well, it's a decision mm-hmm. making. And now, what happened? And I've seen you see it over the years, guys. You know, once they get past mile three hundred, now mm-hmm. all of a sudden, does the guy lose concentration every once in a while? I mean, it, that's the dividing line. And we've seen guys that can't stay focused for that full five hundred miles. Well, the, well, the other thing, look at it this way: you got more good cars. And more good drivers in the Cup Series than you do in the Xfinity Series. The you know there are legitimately twenty to twenty five, probably Cup cars that can win with without rain shortening and, and, and fluky situations. There's not that many Xfinity cars that can win. That you know there's more good guys. There's a deeper talent pool, and it running twentieth in a Cup race isn't as bad as running twentieth in an Xfinity series race. So these guys are going to have to adjust their expectations a little bit, I think. I I think Tom just nailed it on the head. Expectations are going to be huge. Which crew chief can manage, help his young driver manage his expectations? In that regard, I I would look at, I would look at uh, Jason Ratcliffe, for example, with Christopher Bell, who, who had Matt Kenseth. Okay. And I'm sure that not only was Jason a crew chief, he learned from Matt as well. And I think with him going back with all the experience that he's got, that's going to be huge for Christopher. And and I think calling on the experience on the crew chief's part to help that driver keep his cool, maintain reasonable expectations, race himself, race the track, as we always hear at Darlington and some other racetracks, race the track and race those other three guys, you know, just don't make any don't make as many mistakes as and, as your as and your let's head. not overlook the the role team chemistry plays. Joey Logano is a perfect example of it. A past champion, but when he came up the first couple of years with Gibbs, he and his teammates didn't play well together. And I'm not I'm not assigning blame on on anybody, but but it it, it clearly seemed like three against one mm-hmm. on that team then. And he goes to Penske. And Brad Keselowski really lobbied for him to be his teammate. He's welcomed with open arms, and he he becomes a champion. And that's not slagging anybody on either team, but it's you got to have the right fit. So many things have to work for there to be success. you got so many more people working on your stuff at the cup level than you do at the Xfinity level. So, I mean, if I were to give these young guys, all three of these guys, some advice, I would say – Make it your priority 1A after what you do in the race car to spend as much time as you can in the race shop, learning to getting to know every one of those guys that work specifically on your stuff, make the earn their trust and confidence by showing them what you're willing to contribute. Yeah. And there are, I mean, there are questions around each of those teams. I mean, you know, I mean the, the most solid one 
would seem to be Cole Custard, Stuart Haas. You know, then you look at Tyler Reddick and where exactly is RCR at this point? Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're really not sure. And then you look at Christopher Bell, and as we talked about at the top of the segment, how much support is the 95 going to get from Joe Gibbs Racing? Is it going to be total support? Is it really going to be a fifth team? Or is it going to be, you know, a five and a half team? I mean, it's just that's what we really don't know that Christopher Bell is going to get. We think it's going to be almost mm-hmm. equal support, mm-hmm. but but who really knows? And All even right. even if it is a true fifth team, how about that 15 miles between JGR and where the race shop, 95 race? I think yeah. that 15 miles could become 1,500 miles. Yep. It'll be interesting to see. When we come back, white flag laps. At O'Reilly Auto Parts, we'll make your auto repair, maintenance, and restoration projects easier. So when your car isn't stopping like it used to, our professional parts people will help you find the brake parts and supplies you need to do the job right the first time. Now through February 25th, get 15% off a set of brake vest pads and two rotors. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Grime. Friction, wear, destructive words when it comes to an engine. Adding Z-Max Micro Lubricant to your oil and fuel allows it to soak into metal to disperse harmful carbon deposits. You wouldn't wax a car with dirt on it. Don't run your engine without Z-Max. Help improve performance, reduce emissions, extend engine life, and improve fuel mileage with Z-Max Micro Lubricant. Get Z-Max today at Z-Max.com or your local auto parts store. We've got more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters in a moment. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. The fans are on their feet, the lights are flashing, and we're ready for green. Side by side fight for the race lead. To the bottom of the racetrack, host Brad Kozowski. The crowd is roaring. Chase Elliott is in the lead. Four wide out of turn number four, but they're behind Kevin Harvick. Elliott locks up the tires, and he noses into the tire barriers. It is a three-way battle for the lead, coming back to the stripe at the white flag. We've got three cars spinning off turn two. Brad Kozlowski has caught Kyle Busch right on his back bumper as they head into turn number three. Hamlin spins, hits the inside wall. Daniel Suarez slides out into the infield grass. Here comes Elliott. He's all over the bumper of Harvick. Now he'll go to the outside. From hero to zero and back to hero. Rack him up into pool room in Dawsonville. Here comes Chase Elliott. When the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series races in Atlanta, Las Vegas, Bristol, Texas, Charlotte, Kentucky, New Hampshire, and Sonoma, you hear it here on PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Download our free mobile app to listen to the show and more great PRN content on the go. Now back to the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. And welcome back. Time now for our white flag laps. And first up from the NASCAR Hall of Fame, Tom Jensen. Well, we're at the 2020 NASCAR season is about to start. And I got questions. (laughs) Does Jimmy Johnson win an eighth championship? Does he even win a race and make the playoffs? Does Joe Gibbs Racing continue to dominate? Which teams concentrate on the 2020 season and which teams try to get a leg up on 2021 when we're going to have a completely new and different car? How will the new guys fit in at at their teams? Where will some of the the high-priced free agents wind up? We'll start getting answers at Daytona, and I'm very excited that I'll be in Daytona for the 500. But the real test is going to be the next few weeks when we go to places like Las Vegas and Phoenix and Auto Club Speedway and in Bristol and Martinsville about five or six weeks into the season. We'll know who's got their act together and who's in trouble. And I'm going to be interested in seeing who's where. When you said, I've got questions. I pictured you in the riddle in the old Riddler's jacket with question marks all over it. Yes. Yeah. Nice green. <laughs> Batman. All right. Next up from the PRN, it's Rob Albright. Well, somewhat selfishly. I'm looking forward already to Las Vegas because it's going to be fun to climb on, up on a billboard and broadcast a race again. I think there's going to be a lot of drama with the the changes that have taken place aerodynamically, uh, particularly what's happening on the short tracks and the road courses. I think it's going to bring a new level of of excitement to things. As we've talked about the rookies, I think of the hole that that may have theoretically left in the Xfinity Series, but I think it's going to make the Xfinity Series exciting as well. 
because in addition to Justin Allgaier, who you would think would be the odds-on favorite, Chase Briscoe, Austin Sendrick, Noah Gregson, Brandon Jones, are there three? Are there a Christopher Bell and a Cole Custer and a Tyler Reddick in those three guys, in those four guys somewhere? And I think there might be. So both at the cup level and the Xfinity level, it's going to be an exciting season. All right. Looking forward to it. See you in Vegas. Yes, sir. All right. Not at the tables. I can't afford that. Me either. All right. It's finally happened. For years, I've been banging the drum for NASCAR's Hall of Fame to form a veterans committee so that when the time comes, the voters will know which of the older drivers should go in and in which order. To the credit, as we've talked about earlier with Tom, they now have. A new honors committee will provide the names for the Pioneer ballot, which will induct one member a year. And I like that. The modern era, which is, uh, you know, the guy that's participated in the last 60 years, will get two members in a year. Now, that part, I don't know that I'm quite as enthusiastic about. Why do we have to have just three folks a year and only three folks go in a year? Why can't it be two or, in some cases, six, depending on who's newly eligible this year? I prefer the idea that maybe each person gets to vote for no more than four people. And anyone who gets 75% of the vote gets in. Some years, those choices may be easy. Others, it may be hard to find more than one person we consider hall worthy. Either way, we do know that some of the folks who get this whole thing started, who got this whole thing started in NASCAR, they will have a place in the Hall of Fame. Talk to you next week. The O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters was presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts, your professional parts people. This is PRN, the performance racing network.